let's talk about the reality of Kirk Cousins at the moment, man. Two weeks into the NFL season. I'm going to keep it honest, man. The Vikings may have the best quarterback in the NFL right now. If you look at the top quarterbacks, the Josh Allens, the Patrick Mahomes, the Joe Burrows, you know, I mean, Tua is making his way into the conversation now, too, um, early on in this NFL season. But I'm going to tell you right now, man, Kirk Cousins is definitely doing his part, bro. He's absolutely balling right now, right? Now, there's a couple mistakes with the strip fumbles, but... You know, that to me, he lacks a little bit of awareness. You know, I've always said that. There's something about his awareness that I don't like. But at the end of the day, he's making more plays than he is not making plays. So that's always a good thing when you're a quarterback for an NFL team. You feel me? So Kirk Cousins, man, let's just let's just be a hundred. And y'all know how we feel over here. So y'all know of R.A.P. talking that talk. You know it means something, man. Although we're 0-2, man. We're 0-2 by shooting ourselves in the foot, making mistakes that we can definitely fix and we need to fix if we want to win some football games. Because when you're turning the ball over seven times in two football games, bruh, and you actually were in the game, one possession, like we've only lost these games by one freaking score, dog. Like that says a lot about the, the resiliency of coming back, the offense doing their part and coming back and fighting back, especially in the Thursday night game. The week one was more of a dog fight, low, low scoring game, 17 to 20, but 344 yards, two touchdowns and interception in game one. Now that interception, it's 50, 50 because KJ Osborne touched the ball. He didn't, you know, hold on to it. He let a guy come and rip it out of his hands. So you can say, yeah, it goes on Kirk's um, stat sheet. But at the end of the day, KJ has to take some blame for that interception as well. All right. Then you got Thursday night, man, 364 yards and four touchdowns with a 125.6 passer rating. And then in week one, he had a 102.8 passer rating. Like you really can't sit back and say anything bad about Kirk Cousins's play. You really can, man. And y'all know I would be the first to come on here and say, man, look, I'm ready to go, man. Get rid of him. He's trash. He's garbage. But you really can't, man. He's actually playing good football right now. And everybody else is playing good football with him. It's just the points of the turnovers, man. We got to learn how to hold on to the ball. If we would have held on to the ball in week one and week two, we would be 2-0 and easily, but we're not. We're 0-2. So now we got to bounce back. I see Kirk having another good game, 300-plus yard game against the Chargers. Now, their pass rush... It showed a little bit yesterday during during Sunday football, man. I was watching them, man, and they were getting to the quarterback. I ain't going to lie. I think they, they had like six or seven team sacks, so they were definitely getting busy. But you know what, man? Kirk Cousins has to sit back and realize like, hey, this is my offensive line. And Kevin O'Connell, too, because we can't put all this on Kirk Cousins. Like, Kevin O'Connell needs to understand what we're dealing with on the offensive line. And let's start getting some quick throws out there, man. Let's start hitting Jordan Addison on quick slants, you know, Justin Jefferson on screens. Like, don't throw a tight end screen. Throw a screen to Jordan Addison and, and, and Justin Jefferson, people that can make a guy miss and then maybe take it for 50 yards. You know what I'm saying? Let's 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 make that happen. I think that would actually benefit us a lot more. But as we're sitting here with two weeks of football down, I'm telling you right now, man, Kirk Cousins is the best quarterback in the NFL right now. Now, there's a couple other guys that are balling pretty good right now and within two weeks that you can say, hey, can be in that conversation that usually aren't in that conversation. I mean, Brock Purdy's over there balling out for San Francisco. Um, Dak Prescott is balling out right now. But Hey, man, Kirk Cousins, he might be at the top of the MVP list as, as we speak, although the team isn't winning. But you got to look into why the team isn't winning. So and, and again, to win MVP, your team obviously has to be winning and has to make it to the playoffs, most likely. And that's going to be the only way they're going to consider you for MVP being the quarterback. But I'm going to tell you right now, man, if Kirk Cousins can bounce back and we can win two games in a row because we're going Chargers and then we got to go to Carolina, which those two games are definitely winnable football games. If he can put up the same numbers, I'm going to tell you right now, through four weeks of football and they start having those talks of who's the best quarterback in the NFL, man, because Patrick Mahomes, he ain't, he ain't looking like Patrick Mahomes right now. And I'm going to tell you right now, Joe Burrow, although, and again, that's not saying that these guys aren't going to bounce back because I do believe Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, when it's all said and done, like they're going to be at the top of the list, of course, right? Because they'll find a way to make it happen. But our guys actually there in the conversation, man. 
our guys in the conversation. So let me know how you feel about Kirko, man. Is Kirko the MVP dark horse already? After two weeks, man, drop it down in the comments, man. We can finally say we got the best quarterback in the NFL. Quit playing with us. Shout out Kirko, man. Holla at your boy. Yeah. Smooth summer. Who running? I hear them talking, but they ain't gonna do nothing. Celebration, I might have a toes with you. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling great, I'm terrific. We ain't taking no losses, we winning. Undefeated, check the percentage. 